Repairing an IKEA FIXA 7.2 volt cordless drill by replacing its battery. So I went and got myself a FIXA 7.2 volt cordless drill. The only problem with which is that the battery went out in two weeks after I bought it. And I can't take it back because I've lost the receipt for the purchase. So I thought to myself that how hard can it be to take a cordless drill apart? And let's take it apart. It only has seven screws. It seems that this corner screw doesn't want to come out of its hole but you can just leave it in there because it's actually just going to let you open the case anyway. We're going to have to peel the sticker from the bottom to be able to open the case. And the case should come apart by just pulling the uh, sides to different directions. And there we go, the case is open. The device itself is very, very simple. You have your gearbox, your electric motor, the turning on switch, the batteries, the charging circuit, the charging jack and the charging light. And that's the entire device. Now let's measure the batteries inside the device. And in the first battery we can get 4 volts, which seems okay. And the other battery gives us 0 0.06 volts, which that, that's not very good. Now the broken cell is of course going to have to be replaced, but since I don't have a similar cell, I'm going to have to use something else. I did have a HP laptop battery that I scavenged from an old an HP laptop that had gone bad. The batteries themselves seem to be okay as I measured them to be at 1.7 volts. The voltage of the laptop cells are the same 3.6 volts as the cordless drill batteries are, but they are bigger. The main difference being that the new batteries would be almost double the capacity that the old ones. But to get the new batteries in, we're going to have to disassemble the current batteries out of the drill. And as we can see, there's some black heat shrink tubing around the contact points, and we're going to have to remove this stuff before we can desolder the old batteries. Now that we've gotten rid of the heat shrink tubing, we're going to take apart the old laptop battery so that we can get two cells that we're going to put inside the drill. Now that we've managed to disconnect the cells from the original battery, we can measure the voltage of them to determine their polarity and at the same time to see that they don't contain the 0, 0.0 something volts because in that case the cell is dead and we don't want to use it. Since these cells seem to be completely okay, we're going to go to the next stage and prepare them to be soldered on to, the, to replace the old ones. I'm going to be adding some solder to the original tabs in the cells so that the soldering in the drill will be easier later on. You'll want to make sure that you use the minimum amount possible when soldering directly onto the cells so that they don't warm up. These cells do not like warming up. Now 
Now that the soldering is complete, let's check the solder for continuity with the multimeters continuity mode to see that we don't have cold joints. And since these seem to be okay, we'll move on to the other side and repeat the same procedure there. Now since these cells are joined in parallel and the ones in the drill are joined in series, we're going to have to detach these cells from each other and then resolder them to be in series. Now that our new batteries are almost ready, let's go and desolder the old batteries out of the drill. Now before we wire our new batteries inside the drill, let's make them in series and use some tape to hold them together so that they don't rattle around and cause issues. Now that one half of the battery is ready and the battery pack has been taped together, let's put some solder on the tabs on the other side. Now that our new battery pack is ready, let's go ahead and put it in the drill. And if you're using heat shrink tubing, remember that it goes in before soldering, not after. Because taking apart what you just created because you forgot to put in the tubing is annoying as hell. And now we get to the point where it was important to mark the polarity of our new cell. Red goes to the positive side and black goes to the negative side. Simple, but important to remember, because otherwise bad things could happen, like rivers turning into blood, and knives falling out of the sky. I'll note that the heat shrink tubing didn't work too well for me, so I didn't use it on the third cable, and instead used something else to do the work. And our work is almost done, the cell is soldered in correctly, but before we go forward we're going to test it, that it actually works in place, before we go closing it in. Voltages seem okay. Since the heat shrink tubing didn't work, I'm just going to use hot glue for the insulation. And now that our potential fire hazard insulation is done, let's go ahead and put everything together again. Here we can see the drill, it's currently charging, let's go ahead and disconnect it, the power cable, and as we can see, it works fine. As always, thank you for watching, and I hope this has been helpful for you.